Hi guys, this is the long-awaited, uh, well, it seems long-awaited anyway, I'm getting loads of emails about it. Uh, I've had two. Um, <laughs> uh, this is part B of part four of the card game. Uh, this is showing a deck of cards. So it, it was almost finished, almost finished last week. The phone rang and then after that I had some technical difficulties. So anyway, uh, here's the video in all its glory. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching. Alright, so over here we have our deck. Um, and we don't have any way to, to visibly show it, but we can sort of see where the cards are. Uh, remember we showed, we did that debug trick last time. So what we're going to do is we're going to create visible cards. So in order to do that, we need to actually create a prefab. So we're going to go ahead and open up our card scene. So this is our card scene from here. And yeah, I'll save it. Uh, okay, so we have our card scene here. So this contains our one and only playing card. So if I just zoom in a little bit here. So this is our playing card over here. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to drag and drop the playing card from here into our prefab folder. So I have the prefab folder selected down here. And I just want to drag it into there. So that's the easiest way I know how to, to make a prefab. Um, that's all we need to know and it contains everything that we need it to have so we've got our sprite renderer we've got our card model and we have our card flipper as well so the, the actual every piece of code that we require on there is on our card so that's it so now we're going to go back to our card deck so this is our scene for card deck now i I'd like to have separate scenes for each prefab that we're building. So currently we're, we're building our card deck prefab. So I like to have it separated out into to different uh, scenes. You can put all your prefabs in one scene. You don't have to do it the way that I'm doing it, but I, I, I think it's a, a cleaner look. Uh, and disk space these days is fairly cheap. I mean, you can buy uh, an SSD 250 gig drive for like 120 bucks. So it's it's storage is cheap so take advantage of it okay so we are going to go back to our scripts folder i'm going to create a visible deck here so uh so i'm going to call it a deck view uh, because i am running out of ideas for naming things okay so here's our uh, deck view and because i renamed it badly I'm going to have to name it here. Okay, so there is our start and our update that we don't need. Okay, so our deck view is going to display the cards inside the deck. Now we're going to have a starting position and we're going to have an ending position. Uh, well, sorry, we don't need the ending position, we need the start position. We also need to reference the uh, card. Uh, prefab that we just created just by dragging and dropping that in there we need to re reference that uh, and I'll show you one of the neatest ways to do it so I'm gonna have a public vector 3 and we're gonna call it our start we'll just call it start and I'm gonna have a public game object and we're gonna call this card prefab so that is our two public properties that we have so far so far anyway so we have a start and we have a card prefab so i'll go back into here now i'm going to put this on the same uh, game object as our deck so i just drag it across there and then that gives us our uh, prefab so you can see that everything's filled in there i'll take off the debug code for just now because we don't really need it uh, normal so we have a card card prefab uh, so go to the prefabs folder and drag in the card prefab that we just created about two minutes ago so the card comes in and it's at position zero 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 now that means that it's actually in the main view so this is what the the uh, the, the player will see when they they, they uh, boot up this this uh, scene we don't want that. We actually want card to be hidden. Now, we're not going to hide the prefab. We're just going to knock it to the side here. So when we move it off screen, we just need to move it to some position that's that's miles and miles away. 
uh, from the camera so that the camera view is free and clear. Now if we go back to our card desk test and you see where it says card prefab, what we want to do is we want to drag and drop that one in there. So that now gives us our card preview, um, our card prefab is now set up. Okay, so that's pretty much all we need for the, the public properties. We have the start and end positions. Um, actually, we can have another one here called float uh, card offset. Uh, now the card offset is just going to be, we're going to display the cards uh, one in, effectively one on top of the other. So this will determine whether we're displaying the cards in a sort of fanned out formation. So if I get my cards again, where's my cards? So if we leave our card offset as zero, then that means all the cards are going to look like that. They're going to be stacked neatly on top of each other. If we make it a smaller number, we can start to see the, the cards fanning out. If we make it a larger number, eventually we'll start to see uh, you know the the actual suits and uh, rank values for the cards. So we'll we'll play with this value as we we uh, we go coding. Right, let's go coding. So, couple of things we need to change. We have our deck of cards now. Our deck of cards uh, is actually uh, has a hidden value in there. So because our cards are private we need to create a public method that allows us to enumerate through them all. So our public method is going to be my enumerable. Our public method uh, called get cards. Uh, we're going to use our yield again. So for each int i in cards, yield return i. Okay. So that now gives us public access to in to our cards in here while maintaining the integrity of cards and so nobody can change cards because we actually want to add a couple of methods that that uh, that also uh, deal out cards so we don't ever want to allow anyone to to change this but we do want to give them a, a effectively a read only view into the cards so back to our deck view our deck view is going to, well, deck view doesn't really live on its own. Deck view needs deck. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a requires component uh, attribute onto our class that says we have to have deck because deck view does not live on its own. Uh, and we also need a private variable here called deck. So when our our deck view starts up, so our start, we grab a reference to that component, which is the great thing about Unity is the fact that everything is component based. So you can have some things that require other components, which kind of it, use the, I wouldn't say use it sparingly, but certainly be aware of what you're using it for. Uh, deck doesn't require deck view. But deck view does require deck. Okay, so you see, there's a, there's a relationship between the two of them, but they're not necessarily um, melded together. Uh, certainly, deck view it requires deck, but deck can live by itself because we didn't need deck view up until just now. And we are going to create another method called show cards. Okay, so our new show cards method. is going to iterate through all the integers from our previous method, so our get cards method here. It's going to iterate through that, it's going to create a, an instance of our card prefab, and then it's going to put it at this, or this start position plus whatever this card offset is, and we'll just keep on adding to this position using card offset. So, for each int i in, uh, deck dot get cards. So 
So we want to create an instance of the game object. So we do game object card copy equals game object. And then we use this method uh, here called instantiate. And the original object is card prefab. Uh, now we need to tell it what position it's going to be at that. So card copy uh, equals oops, sorry dot transform dot position equals uh, and it is start. But it's not really that though, is it? So we need to do some kind of additional calculations here. So um, how many cards do we have? So we'll have a variable called card count. And our new card offset, we'll just call it card offset, CO, equals card offset times card count. And then we will do card copy dot transform. Oops. Card copy dot transform dot position. Um, that's not going to work, though, is it? Um, uh, if we do this, it's not going to work. So we can't do that in here. So what we can do is we can do vector three temp equals start plus. We can add vectors together though, which is pretty cool. Uh, and our vector three is going to be our card offset, zero offset. So that gives us our new, so our temporary variable is going to be the, the start position plus whatever our card offset is multiplied by the current card that we're at. Uh, and the current card that we're at, we're going to add one to at the end of this here. And that is going to be temp. So then we do card count, add one to that. And then the phone rang and other things happened and here we are a week later so let's get back to the action uh, i was actually explaining how the show cards method works and that's what we're going to go back to just now so um alrighty okay right so we had our card offset uh then we then use this method here called instantiate instantiate takes in some kind of uh, game object. In this case, we have a card prefab, so we're going to uh, create a, a copy of our card prefab. And the way we, we copy objects in Unity is we use instantiate. Um, this makes a, a copy of the card. We then create our temporary position, which is done inside here, which is our card offset. And we're not interested in the Y axis or the Z axis, we're just interested in X. Uh, and then we set the position of the card to be temp. Now, notice that the position has actually gone through through the transform object. Everyth everything to do with scale, rotation, position is all through the transform object. And then we just march our way through the cards. So there's our card deck. Now, we notice that the card offset is zero. So when we run this, we are going to get all these cards and they're going to be positioned at this point here and we are they're all just going to be at the the start position zero 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 so what we want to do is we want to click on our card desk text so this is where our deck view is and change that offset to something like 0 0.2 maybe we'll try that there uh, our start position we might want to make like minus four maybe something like that um, and then we'll save the scene and run it. Ooh, now we're getting cards. So you can see that we now have all our cards stacked neatly, one behind the other. 
So we need to do one more thing, and that is uh, our card copy will contain a component of card. So we just need to flip it around so that we're showing the face side of it. So we will do card model, uh, card model equals card copy dot get component, and then card model. Because remember that our prefab contains everything we need to make a card, and that includes our card model. So card model dot show. I can't remember what this is called now. Toggle face, and we want to set that to be true. So our card model we get from our card copy. So it's just a component of our, our prefab. And then we call the method toggle face and set that to be true. So now when we run this, after it compiles, there we go. Not what I was looking for, <laughs> has to be said. <laughs> Uh, because uh, I think we've actually made a mistake. So you notice that that was the two of hearts. And if we go back down to our deck, we'll see that the two of hearts is actually the zeroth element. Uh, and I think that's because we also need to set the integer as well. So we do card model dot, uh, is it face or card, card index. Card index, yeah, equals i. So where am I getting i from? Remember, i is from our get cards. So we set the card index to be i, and then we toggle the face to be true. So we flip the card over, uh, and then we should, hopefully, fingers crossed, everything should now give us a shuffled card deck. And there we go. We have our shuffled card deck, card deck there. And you can see that we have all the, the items that make it up. Um, and I think that's it for this video anyway. Uh, so you can see that we have all the, the, uh, the items all shuffled there. So uh, next time we are going to look at card hands. Uh, and specifically being able to take this shuffled deck here. Um, which we're, we're, we're only doing this for debug purposes and also just to show that we can actually create uh, a card. We're going to use almost the same code um, when we actually show our card hands. Um, and that's going to be in the next video. So uh, stay tuned until the next video. Sorry this is taking so long to get this, this particular video out. We had a lot of, we uh, had a lot of uh, technical problems uh, on our end, uh, but they're all resolved now. Um, so yeah, so hopefully this vi the next video won't be taking as long as this one did. So anyway, thanks very much for watching. Uh, if you like the video, click on the, the link. If you want to subscribe to get timely reminders, uh, click on the little bug down the corner there. Uh, other than that, uh, thanks very much for watching and uh, see you next time.